What's up? Welcome into your daily Buckeye Blitz for a Thursday. You know it's a thirsty Thursday. It's every day's a thirsty day for me. I drink a lot of water, drink a lot of liquor. That's what I do. I am a funnel just waiting to be filled. That sounds weird. Anyway, uh, hey, please check out the BuckeyeCast.com. Everything is on sale. Please get in there. Get something for the season. You got uh, two weeks, less than two weeks till the season starts. Well, just over two weeks, whatever. 31st. You know it. Uh, what else is happening? Uh, please hit like and subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Share it with a friend. I would love that. We're trying to get up to 3,500 subscribers by week one. So you got two weeks. We're getting close. Just need like a couple hundred more. I think we can do it, but not without your help. So just uh, make sure you're subscribed and uh, have a friend subscribe. So uh, today we are talking position groups. Um, I'm going to give you my confidence rankings. We're going to go across the board, all the position groups on the team, not including special teams. Um, I wouldn't even know where to put them because uh, punter is still to be determined. So that's up in the air. That would be probably last. But anyways, let's go position group by position group. Um, don't forget that uh, all the live shows are back Fridays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube. And also Sunday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Me, Jeff, and Sean will be getting into it. Um, this week, I'm not sure what we're talking about. Maybe two deeps. Get into the two deep and stuff like that. We'll see. Um, we also... We got a. We did score predictions last week. And I think Jeff fell off about halfway through, so I have to get Jeff's score predictions. Anyways, today on the Daily Buckeye Blitz, I do appreciate you guys joining me. By the way, um, so let's talk about it. Um, so I'm going to start from most confident to least confident. I'll leave a little suspense there. Um, for me, the most confident group is the cornerback group. Um, you combine the current starters, the depth, and the recruiting, the future, you know, in 2025. Um, Tim Walton's cornerback group is the best unit on the team. Your starters, Denzel Burke, Davis and Igbenosin, Jordan Hancock, they are the best three starters in the country, hands down. Um, so for this season, the question is, how many snaps will Jermaine Matthews get? He's been taking time. He said about 50%, a 50-50 split at uh, the slot and outside corner. So that just makes him even more versatile and valuable to the team. Now, next year, replacing uh, Denzel Burke and possibly IGB could be a challenge. Uh, but the group is loaded with Matthews, Calvin Simpson, Hunt, uh, Lorenzo Styles Jr. has one more year. Uh, then you got Aaron Scott, Bryce West, the true freshman, and Miles Lockhart all on campus. So then you got uh, the top two corners in the 2025 class committed. So uh, this group is by far the most loaded, locked up. We're going to be good for three to four or five years, six maybe. Who knows? Um Position group number two, I feel most confident in the safeties. Safeties, Ohio State, again, best secondary in the country when you include safeties and the DBs. Uh, plus, you, you take your, your starting corners, Denzel Burke, Davis and Igbenosin, Jordan Hancock, then sprinkle in some Caleb Downs and Lathan Ransom at your safety spots. Hands down, best secondary in the country. Uh, Downs is the star for two more years. Um, he also brings stability to the room. Uh, so there's still plenty of potential to replace Ransom next year. Uh, you got Malik Hartford. He was one of the top safeties coming out in his class uh, a year ago. And uh, Jalen McClain, he showed flashes uh, in spring and fall camp, both. So there is good Good things on the horizon after the season, but this season, top, the best secondary, best corners, best safety group, hands down in the country. Uh, number three, my my most confident positions, the receivers. 
Now, this group lost 70% of its production last year in the form of Marvin Harrison. Um, three of the top four wide receivers are very unproven. Uh, Emeka Igbuka is obviously the leader of the group and a proven, productive guy. You got Jeremiah Smith, all world, all everything, Mr. 305, um, probably the best freshman in the country coming in the, to this season, but he hasn't taken a college snap yet. You know, we haven't seen it on the field. We've seen the, the social media clips, the highlights in practice, but, you know, he's got to do it on the field. Then you got Carnell Tate. He should make a huge second year jump. He said it himself. He expects to get a thousand yards. So uh, I love the the high expectations. Brandon Ennis, he's a weapon all over the field. Uh, he could do a few different things for this offense. So, but after those four, the depth has like zero experience. That's the concern there. That's why they're number three on my list. All right. Uh, position group number four, most confident. Um, the running backs. This is the best running back pair in the country with Quinshawn Judkins, Travion Henderson. Their production is proven. Um, they're light on depth and experience after the starters, though, uh, after Trey and Quinshawn. But both Henderson and Judkins will probably leave after this season. So that will force uh, current freshman James Peoples, Sam Williams Dixon into the battle for the starting job in 2025. Now, Coach Locke, he's going to need to load up in the next couple recruiting classes to restock that running back room going forward. So we'll see if he can land another one in this 25 class, and then he might need two more at least in the 26 class. Sorry, some some chick in the fairway. Nice tight little tennis skirt. Ooh. Anyway, uh, back to football. Uh, position group number five, defensive ends. Ohio State has another pair of stud defensive ends with Jack Sawyer and JT Tuamolowal. Then you got your backups. This room is loaded. Uh, Kenyatta Jackson and Caden Curry, they at least have some experience, right? Uh, if it may just be a couple hundred snaps each, but it's something. Uh, we're waiting on Jack and JT to make that move from good to great consistently. You know, JT loves playing against Penn State, but where is it against the Cheaters? Or let's see it against Oregon, you know. Um, Jack had a great bowl game in a meaningless bowl game against Missouri. Let's see it consistently. So we're also waiting on the younger players to show us something. You got – you add in freshman Edric Houston, and the future looks solid, but – the recruiting misses in the previous couple cycles, especially on the edge, um, are going to catch up to Larry Johnson and his position group soon, like after this year in 2025. All right, uh, position group number six. We're going to go long today, baby. That's what she said. Uh, defensive tackles are in my sixth position group of confidence. Um, you got you know, a great pair of starters. This is like, you know, the the entire – framing of, of all these first few groups. You got a great pair of starters in Tyleek Williams, Ty Hamilton, but the depth there hasn't played much. Um, they have shown flash, flashes when they have played, but Hero Canoe, he's heading into his third season, believe it or not. I kind of blew my mind. Um, could he make a jump? You got Taiwan Malone. He should be ready to contribute. We're running out of eligibility here, son. I shouldn't call him son. That sounds stupid. Anyway, then you got second-year guys, Caden McDonald. Uh, he showed some flashes. Jason Moore, they got that P-word potential, but this group needs to show up with the long season coming up. Everybody's going to need to contribute from top to bottom. Uh, next up, group number seven, I got the linebackers. Um, this, is, this is probably the biggest question mark on the defense, I would say. Um you know, you know you, what you got in the reliable veteran Cody Simon at the mill, middle. And then you got your athletic freaky guys, Sonny Styles, CJ Hicks. Um, Styles is switching from safety to linebacker. Looks like he's going to get that starting weak side job. Hicks hasn't played much. He's going into his third year as well. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but it's the way it is. Um, so, the explosive potential is through the roof, but again, it's that P word potential. You know, we haven't seen it on the field. 
Then you add in uh, Arvell Reese and Gabe Powers. That's even more athleticism getting on the field, more speed. So uh, they're my number seven at the linebackers. Number eight, the QBs, quarterbacks. Will Howard feels like he's the logical option for for one year. He'll be your your QB one for one. Um, the offense has a, a ton of firepower. We know that. Um, being surrounded by all that talent could bring out the best in Will Howard, in my opinion. Uh, he shows off, he showed off some flashes at K State as well with limited options to work with. But Ohio State has a, a much better quarterback set situation going into 2024 than we did in 2023. Devin Brown knows the offense. He has some upside, the mobility and things like that. Lincoln Keenholz has uh, been on campus for over a calendar year now. Still has a ton of athletic potential. Then you got the future stars, right, uh, in the freshman Julian Sain and Aaron Nolan. Uh, the present is solid, but the future is very, very bright. Uh, group number nine, the offensive tackles. In the 2023 season was not perfect for these, these guys, Josh Simmons and right tackle Josh Fryer. Fryer had struggles in big games. Uh, he was somewhat incons- he was somewhat consistent as a run blocker, but both are back. Both need to be better this year. Uh, Simmons could potentially make the jump this fall. Um, if Fryer can be consistent and reliable, then the tackle play should be just fine as a group. Uh, the depth is a big question mark for me. Uh, George Fitzpatrick, haven't seen much of him. You got your true freshman, Ian Moore. They showed some flashes during camp, but then you got the high four-star Carter Lowe coming out of the 419, and he's the only tackle in this 2025 class, and I'm not holding out hope for David Sanders. So if if you weren't aware, sorry to break it to you. Um, number 10, position group. we got one more after this. Interior O-line, the guards and center. Uh, returning left guard um, Donovan Jackson is Mr. Reliable. I expect him to be back to his All-American form this year. Center Seth McLaughlin should be fine. Um, right guard is the only position that's up for grabs from a starting point of view. Uh, it's good to have three solid options for, for one spot. Uh, you got Carson Hinsman, Tegra Shibola, and Luke Montgomery. Uh, they just need to figure out the right guard and also hope that McLaughlin can get beyond his issues in last year's playoff game against the Cheaters. So, not too much to ask, right? I'm I'm kind of leaning towards Tegra for that right guard job, just from what they're saying. Uh, and the last group, my least confident group, probably not a big surprise, the, the tight end group. You lose Cade Stover to the draft, you know, but there's just too many questions, you know, after that. Uh, the, the entire group is totally unproven and has very little experience. Will Kazmarek, he he could end up being your tight end one, but he's making the jump from the MAC at Ohio University, right? G. Scott Jr., been here forever. He might have what it takes to be tight end one, but he's never taken that lead role and been given that, you know, the weight of that job. So can he can he pre- perform all that's needed, not just catching? You know, can he be a reliable blocker? Uh, then you got Jelani Thurman. He has all the tools you want, but is he ready in year two? Is he ready to make that jump and, and provide some reliable depth there? Who knows? A lot of depth issues there and, and some of the other groups as well. O-line, some depth issues. So that's my uh, that's my top. That's my 11. So. Let me know what you guys think. Hit me in the comments as always. I'll get back to you. And uh, I appreciate you. Talk to you later. Go Bucks.